because he wanted to hear Pat Pat you're a victim of circumstance and everything's conspiring against you and really being God I should get my act together and just give you what you want because obviously being God I'm wrong and you're right well that isn't what happens it's exactly the opposite of that it's completely on you that's the that's the judgment and so Cain leaves and believe me he's he was wroth before and his countenance had fallen before but it's nothing like it is now and so he hits the next stage and he thinks okay I'm going to take my revenge what am I going to do? I'm going to find the most innocent and worthwhile thing that's favored of God and I'm going to kill it and that's what he does so, and it doesn't matter that it's his brother and Abel, you know, we're drawing the inference Abel's done the right things, everyone likes him everything's flourishing for Abel he's a good guy, he's one of those people that you meet that has everything and then you meet them and you wish you could hate them but you can't because they're really good people and then you really hate them because not only do they have everything but it appears that they deserve it and there's nothing that sort of sits in your soul and rots it more than that realization and so that's the situation with Cain and so Cain thinks Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him so that's so interesting because look, look what happens to Cain here so he's not doing well he's separated from the transcendent and from society he's bitterly resentful and now he goes out and kills the very thing that he most wants to be so he destroys his own ideal right he dis demolishes his own ideal that's how far his resentment has pushed him and so he's, he's done right but it doesn't matter because it enables him to take revenge so he doesn't care it's like, it's like the, the suicidal school shooter that blows off his head at the end of his mayhem it's like it doesn't matter to him it's part of the same art form and the Lord says unto Cain where is Abel thy brother and Cain said I, know, I don't know am I my brother's keeper well that's a good question that's why it's posed in the story because the answer to that is supposed to be yes and God says what have you done the voice of your brother's blood cries unto me from the ground that's actually the motif that Dostoevsky explores, I would say, in Crime and Punishment because what happens is that Raskolnikov is Cain for all intents and purposes and he commits a murder but he gets away with it well, so he thinks so he thinks no one suspects him he buries the money, he can't stand to touch the money he buries it in an in a abandoned lot and he's drawn there now and then to look at where it is but he can't touch it because the money it's so funny because the money before he kills the pawnbroker is not the same as the money after he kills the pawnbroker and the Raskolnikov before he kills the pawnbroker is not the same as the Raskolnikov after he kills the pawnbroker in fact they're not the same at all and so Raskolnikov is tormented by God you could say but not from the external world he sets the crime up quite nicely it's that the, the spirit against which he transgressed tortures him from within and there's no escape from it 